the most difficult situation a dungeon master can run into is when a player character gets a wish. Welcome to my channel. I focus on tabletop role-playing games, video games, and science fiction. In the original Dungeons & Dragons, wishes are mentioned in two places. First, they're mentioned in Monsters and Treasure, and that's the Ring of Three Wishes. And then in Supplement 1, which is Greyhawk, it introduces the spell of Wish as a ninth level spell. But let's talk about the wishes that are mentioned in Monsters and Treasure. Even there, it is mentioned as this can easily upset the balance of the game. And it gave the example of a player wishing for more wishes. And what happens is that it describes that you should send them into an infinite time loop where they go back so they have the wish that they just wished for and they basically kills the player. They disappear into an endless time loop. But um, that's one of the nastier ones. The problem with wishes is that they had originally almost no limitation. Uh, third edition solved the problem by putting a whole bunch of restrictions on it, which actually are almost verbatim in 5th edition. 4th edition just banned the spell completely. But you still had the magic items, the wing of three wishes that could come show up, and wishes have always been the most difficult thing. So how do you handle that as a game master? And th this is the hard question of balance versus upsetting the, the game versus... Um, uh, upsetting the player because the player has found something arguably the most powerful thing in the in the game the wishes you could there are some artifacts that you could argue are more powerful like the machine of Lum the mad from the original Dungeons and Dragons has has the ability to create artifacts which may have the ability to grant wishes but what getting back to the concept of the ring of three wishes is, is a very powerful uh, artifact that can grant three wishes to the player which can do tremendous damage to your campaign you can uh, wish that things didn't happen when i was granted um, i was playing as a player we had went through a whole bunch of things and we we're playing a very high level campaign and I was granted three wishes. I didn't realize that I actually had three wishes. And um, when I suddenly realized I actually used one of the wishes to wish for something, I said, I wish this, I actually said, I wish that the plate mail was plus five instead of plus three, and it became plus five. And we realized, oh, I had three wishes from something else. And we ran into some weird situations in the the DM, like I said, this was very high. We actually ran into Vecna, and when Vecna, Vecna before Vecna was uh, dead, and um, so as soon as we get a chance, I wished that uh, some. I can't remember the exact wording, but we went back in time with the no with the foreknowledge of what would happen if. Um, uh, so that we could make a different decision, which was an interesting thing. And the, the DM allowed that one to occur with certain caveats. And we ran into Vecna again, and Vecna knew what we had done, which was kind of strange. So anybody who doesn't know what, who Vecna is, you can Google that. And particularly Google the one about the head of Vecna, the story. That's a hilarious story. Um, but the... Um, uh, Wishes can really cause problems. And I remember first hearing about wish wars. And the interesting concept is that uh, in your campaign, if two countries get powerful enough and you have two high-level magic users, or two high-level wizards that each have a wish, they can wish terrible things on the other country. And you have, yeah, it's like uh, nukes. If you use them, they'll ruin your whole day. And that's sort of the argument that wishes will, you know, they're like a nuclear weapon. They will ruin your whole day. And they can make terrible 
changes to your campaign because they can uh, do various things. I mean, you it, that the fourth, I mean, the third edition and the fifth edition gave a bunch of restrictions, which are sort of guidelines. But then you have everybody who wants to to wish that. I couldn't find the story. I think it was by Larry Niven. Larry Niven is a science fiction writer who's won a lot of awards and has written a whole host of things. And if you like um, Ringworld and some of the others that uh, he's well known for. But he, I believe he wrote the story, and I can't remember its name, it was a short story about wishes. And he said the most, the simplest wish that you can grant that... Um, is hard for a dungeon master or, or a game master to to mess up is I wish to be healthy and because that one is really hard to his argument was it's really hard to to screw up because you just want to be healthy which means you're at uh, full hit points and all diseases are removed that's great for a much older character um, you know you don't have any trace of any cancers you don't have any traces of uh, anything in your you know you don't have any hardening of the arteries you're just in peak condition you're healthy that's a that's an interesting interesting take on it but in player characters that's really not what the player characters are probably going to wish for they're not going to wish for something as simple as I wish to be healthy because that would put them there they're going to wish for other things and you have to decide do you grant the player characters wish or do you try and pervert it and again this gets into what you have you have to make a decision is what the player character asking for reasonable inside the balance of the game and or will it overbalance the game and that's sort of the the criteria you have to ask for that you have to decide you have to make a decision if the player character is asking for something that will overbalance any of your game then you need to figure a way to pervert the spell and period because you don't have any other option it's going to change the entire complexion of the game he wishes that you know you've got this whole campaign set up to defeat some evil power or whatever or even some good power whatever you to some quest they're trying to complete that's the goal of it and you have to make a decision if he makes a wish that would end the campaign you have basically a two options you can grant the wish and end the campaign which is an option but most people don't want to do that you want to continue the campaign so you decide okay I need to pervert that in some way and you have to think about it and those are hard things to do you've got to figure a way that will would f without upsetting the player and to grant the grant the wish in a perverted way so that you that whatever is wished for is no long won't actually take effect and or something odd about it will be there or things like that now if you're running a campaign and he wishes that the great evil wizard uh is defeated or is destroyed or something like that you can still say, okay, he's destroyed. However, his apprentice, which was a couple of levels below him, now takes his place. You know, it, it's just because you just, uh, kill the head of an organization doesn't mean that the person below them or the that they then become the next in power. That's what you find with, you know, the classic mob type organization where you have, you know, the big boss gets killed, gets knocked off and that somebody else takes his place. And that's the rule of chain of command so that you, you do that in the military. If something kills the, the general, then uh, the colonel takes over and takes the place of the general and takes generally the title of that. So you ha that's that will let you continue your campaign because now you you haven't done that unless the campaign was worded around just offing this one character. So you have to make those decisions that you can just by getting rid of one challenge doesn't mean other challenges still don't exist. 
Now, if they ask for just lots of gold or things like that, you can grant that with um, some odd caveats. You may, um, one of the things that, uh, like I've mentioned before, I'm probably the biggest Monty Hall Dungeon Master, not by intention, but I, by sort of by accident. I remember I mentioned where a um, person walked out of the dungeon with two one billion gold piece gems. Well, they're too valuable to sell. They're worth more than a kingdom. The guy ended up putting them in, in a backpack and taking a mace to the backpack to shatter them into small little pieces that he could then sell. And he lost, yes, it was a billion, but he got lots of money out of it. I can't remember how many. It was like one one thousandth uh, uh, yeah, uh, of the, the value, one percent of the value, or less than one percent of the value, a billion. But yeah, okay, so you're only talking millions of gold pieces <laughs> there. So he destroyed, but it, he had millions of gold pieces to spend. To, to spend, which is still a, a tremendous fortune in any game, whatever the the edition of the game. So somebody walking out with multiple wishes or too many powerful artifacts, you have to balance that. Somebody wishing for a higher attribute, that's an interesting one, uh, or maxing an attribute. Those you could do, but you could also add weird quirks. It depends upon how uh, perverse you want to be with the, the spell. Somebody says, oh, I want to increase my strength. He's a, I want my strength to go above, you know, the what is it, 20 I think is the highest. I want it to be like 24. You could grant them that, but then you could say, oh, but you have other problems that you have to eat a tremendous amount of food and if you don't eat the food it affects your constitution and you, you lose health so that they're constantly trying to eat if, for those of you who have read like the original books of the three musketeers there's um i think it's porthos is the character who is massive and eating massive quantities which is, is in in the books but you don't ignore the movies but anyway so those are the things that you can do. You can add quirks to what they've got there. If they want a weapon, they want to they say they want the, their weapon to be more powerful, uh, make it intelligent. That's a reasonable thing to do. You By increasing the power of it, you can create an intelligent sword or wand or, or whatever that has, by granting the wish, you can add those type of things. So you're actually giving, shall we say, a minor flaw or thing um, effects to the to the spell. If they, you know, they're asking to heal someone or raise someone, that's reasonable. They, now you you can get into the interesting question of um, if the person is uh, dead and you you resurrect them who are they trying to resurrect are they trying to resurrect somebody that's a member another player character okay that's not a problem go ahead and do that one but if they're trying to resurrect uh somebody else like i did the video on um a, a good villain where they go around and raise the dead um which can cause whole hosts of challenges you you raise the the guy who's died he had a young young wife and he died and the young wife is now remarried but you raise the old guy and he comes back and his wife is with somebody else who she legally married because he was dead uh, but he's now back alive and yes you can cause whole hosts of things like that and a wish like that actually is some interesting things you may want to grant it because it could add a whole twist to your adventures because i believe in fifth edition you can the re, the full resurrection can resurrect somebody who's 200 years dead but a wish you could argue could resurrect somebody who's more than that and that's that you're up to the dm to decide whether that would enhance the game or would make it uh less fun so wishes are are the most interesting challenge that you can run into and you have and the key to it is determining is the player trying to do create an unfair advantage 
for either the party or himself. And if he's trying to do that, then you should really try and pervert it. If he's trying to be altruistic and do something, you know, oh, I wish that the crops in my country, uh, that my con the, the land in my country was more productive. That's a hard one because that affects the entire economy. But you, you know, it's, it's a wish for the good of the country. And there's uh, that. I've actually remember someone saying when they're trying to do the demographics of their country, it says, oh, that the country that a wish had been cast on it to increase the productivity of the soil so that it produced more in an agricultural economy. You could do that, uh, or you could do the curse where you curse your enemy that their ground, that their land is not as productive. Now you may want to think about that one. Do you want to allow those type of massive economic impact in in your game? And it depends like, whether you're doing one shots or if you're doing a full campaign and how that again that's how would, that would impact the entire outcome of your game. So I'm trying to give you some guidelines of how I've done it in the past and how I failed at it. And I have, I have failed at wishes. I did some, some, I've messed up a couple of times where I did some things that were bad to that. And it's like, um, this is one that is very politic. <laughs> this one is, is, is some interesting politics. And it, it was somebody wished to be healthy, and the question I the question I ask, if the character is female, is being pregnant healthy? Because you could argue, okay, she got a wish from uh, Jin and whatever, so she wishes to be healthy, and the Jin, as part of that, goes, okay, you're perfectly healthy, but you're also pregnant with the offspring of the Jin. Now, the, the, or I said that gets political because that depends upon your political beliefs about is being pregnant healthy or not. And you can do some things like that. That gets a little bit strange. Um, and that one, I'm today I'm not really sure how, if I would do that one again. Uh, that was done um, probably 30 years ago, which was a very different environment and in, in a very different uh, setting than here. So that one is, is is an interesting one because the character, yes. And you can run into people who wish to be um, the other gender or something like that. It gets into whole hosts of things you can do with that. But it's, so I'm just trying to give you some guidelines. You have to decide as the DM, do I try and pervert the spe pervert it? Do I do it for humor? The, the always adding some humorous aspect always makes the game more fun. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, you can add some humor. Or do I do it because the player is trying to take unfair advantage or that? And then the question that you get is when a character gets high enough level when they can cast a wish daily. That's a problem, and I personally sort of, I, that's where you get into this concept of the wish wars, where they can wish on a daily basis for something, and that could be really complicated to handle, because now it's not just a once in a while thing or a rare thing, but the player character is so high a level that you can do that, and now we're really playing at that point in time that you're you're playing a superhero game because the character can wish a whole bunch of things. So I hopefully I gave you some ideas what have you done with wishes? What kind of problems have you run into? What have you how have you solved strange wishes from player characters? What are some of the strange wishes that characters have made in your campaigns? I'd love to hear those kind of stories. Thank you for watching my video. I look forward to learning what you think about this video. Let me know in the comments below. I appreciate all your comments. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, give me a thumbs down. I appreciate both forms of feedback. If you're new here and would like to subscribe, you can click on the icon on the left. If you're interested, there's more content on the right.